Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto Chapter 15, entitled, Instructions for Civilized Human Beings. Text number three. Devo Dva Deve Pitri Karye Trin. Eka Eka Kam Arayatrava Ojayad san sushama samrido api Chare kuryam na vishtaram Dho bhrayada pitri karyatrin Ekaikam ubayat Java Bojayad Samamrido Api Jade Kuryam Navishtaram Word for word Go to Deve During the period when oblations are offered to the demigods Vitri Kare in the Shraddha ceremony in which oblations are offered to the forefathers. Three, three, Eka, one, Ekam, one, Abhayatra, for both occasions. Va, either. Bojayat, one should feed. Su, Samrida Api. Even though one is very rich, Sadhe, when offering oblations to the forefathers, Guryat, one should do. Na, not. Vishtaram, very expensive arrangements. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. During the period for offering oblations to the demigods, one should invite only two brahmanas. For offering oblations to the forefathers, one may invite three brahmanas. Or in either case, only one brahma will suffice. Even though one is very opulent, he should not endeavor to invite more brahmanas or make various expensive, expensive arrangements on those occasions. Purport. As we have already mentioned, Sri Advaita Acharya, during the general observed ceremonies to offer oblations to the forefathers, invited only Haridas Thakur. Thus he followed this principle. Name bhaktas chatur vidi na mad bhakta sapacha priyaha. The Lord says it's not necessary that one become very expert in vague knowledge because he can become my devotee, my bhakta or devotee. I'll read that again. <clears throat> it's not necessary that one become very expert. <clears throat> in vague knowledge before he can become my bhakta or devotee. Even if one is born in a family of dog eaters, he can become my devotee 
and be very dear to me in spite of taking birth in such a family. Therefore, offerings should be given to my devotee and whatever my devotees has offered me should be accepted. Following this principle, one should invite a first-class brahmana or vaishnava, a realized soul, and feed him while observing the Shraddha ceremony to offer obeisance, oblations to one's forefathers. Did it sound okay? It's too much feedback. Can you sound, man? Can you sound okay? Can someone can adjust the sound? Oh, translation once again. During the period of offering oblations to the demigods, one should invite only two brahmanas. While offering oblations to the forefathers, one may invite three brahmanas. Or in either case, only one brahman will suffice. Even though one is very opulent, he should not endeavor to invite more brahmanas or make various expensive arrangements on those occasions. And still, the sound. The sound is okay? It's okay? So this verse is dealing with the Shraddha ceremony. And as far as householders are concerned, they engage in different types of spiritual activities, especially in offering oblations to their forefathers and giving as charity to other brahmanas, the paraphernalia engage in sacrifice. Generally, this charity is given to sannyasis, brahmins, and the renounced order of life. If such a sannyasi is not available, the chair is given to brahmana householders engaged in food activities. One should not make elaborate arrangements to perform the Shraddha ceremony of offering oblations to the forefathers. The best process for Shraddha is to distribute a Bhagavad Prasadam, food that is first offered to Krishna, to all one's forefathers and relatives. This makes the first class Shraddha ceremony. In the Shraddha ceremony, there's no need to offer meat or eat meat. Unnecessary killing of animals must be avoided. Those in the lower grade of social society prefer to perform sacrifices by killing animals. But one who advanced in knowledge must avoid such unnecessary brahmanas. There's still some feedback. Can you hear? There's too much feedback. It's too loud. So I'll read the text one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Text one says, My dear king, some Brahmins are too are very much attached to food of activities. Some are attached to austerity dependence. So others study the Vedic literatures. For some, although very few, cultivate knowledge and practice different yogas, especially bhakti yoga. A person desiring liberation for his forefathers or himself should give charity to a Brahmin who adheres to impersonal monism. In the absence of such an advanced brahmana, charity may be given to a brahman addicted to the fruit of activities. <clears throat> if one arranges to feed many brahmins or relatives during the Shraddha ceremony, there will be discrep discrepancies, time, place, especially, and respectfully, and ingredients in the person to be worshipped and the method of of offering worship. <clears throat> when one gets the opportunity 
of a suitable auspicious time and place, one should with love and all with love offer prepare with ghee to the deity of the Supreme Personality God, then offer this prasadam to a suitable person, a Vaishnava or Brahman. This will be the cause of everlasting prosperity. One should offer prasad to the demigods, the saintly persons, one's forefathers, the people in general, one's family members, one's relatives, one's friends, seeing them all as devotees of the Supreme Personality Godhead. A person of fully aware of religious principles should never offer anything like meat, eggs, or fish in the Shraddha ceremony. Even if one is a Katriya, he himself should not eat such things. When suitable food prepared with ghee is offered to saintly persons, the function is pleasing to the forefathers and the Supreme Lord, who are never pleased when animals are killed in the name of sacrifice. Persons who want to advance in superior religion are advised to give up all envy of other living entities when in relation to the body, words, or mind. There is no religion superior to this. So the G. <clears throat> Shraddha's ceremony is there. But Sri Bhagavatam <clears throat> This uh, discussion deals with two factors Shraddha ceremony and who should be invited to the Shraddha ceremony. So, we know Advaita Charya performed the Shraddha ceremony and then he wanted to feed the Brahmin. But here it says, one should not feed more than three Brahmins. Two Brahmins or one will suffice. So he called Haridas Thakur. <clears throat> Haridas Thakur was not a Brahmin. He was not born in a Brahmin family. He was the Namacharya. When Haridas Thakur protested, saying, you can't call me to be the first to offer prasadam because I'm not a brahmana. But Dvaita Acharya said, you're better than 10 million brahmanas because Haridatha Kaur was the Namacharya. Even though he wasn't born in a brahman family, he was given the title Namacharya and would chant 300,000 names of the Hare Krishna mantra every single day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is the the uh, <clears throat> this doesn't necessarily apply to most of us because the 
uh, Swarath ceremonies, many, many for Grihastras who are concerned about delivering their forefathers. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, Eleven <clears throat> anyway, in Shiva Bhagavatam, it says. that that it's not necessary after many many birds one achieves a rare human form of life and one becomes a devotee, then we have no more obligation to uh, our debt to anyone. So, uh, generally, when a person leaves his body in Mandavan, we have Kirtan, and then after three days, we have a, a feast, and we offer prasadam to Krishna, to the deity, and then to the deceased person, and this will, uh, <coughs> is all that's necessary. Klodo se nehe rajan. Kirtanya eva krishna sha mukta sangha paranjari. In Aja Kala Yuga, it's all is required. Harinam, 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 eva kevalo. Kalu in the stave, in the stave, in the stave, I got you on your ta. Then, the kirtan, the chanting the holy name, is the only thing that is actually required in all functions. But in 1975, when they opened the temple, they had to call the local Brahmins to perform a jagya sacrifice so people would accept our temple as being bona fide. But Srila Prabhupada said that just by doing kirtan, that was all that was really required. So, <clears throat> people think uh, in the last purport, Prabhupada says that the, they call this the Anglazi Mandir and <clears throat> then in the beginning they wouldn't accept our prasadam because they thought it was contaminated book by western people but this is a misconception It's over and over again in the Shastra. Snatan Goswami said, by chemical manipulation, bell metal is turned into gold when touched by mercury. Similarly, a person properly initiated, he can be acquire the qualities of Brahmana. 
And it also says, a person who has the pure characteristics of a Brahmin through the devotional service, which like a blazing fire, burns to ashes all the sinful reactions of past lives, is certainly saved from the consequences of sinful acts as taking birth in lower family. Even if he may be born in a family of dog eaters, he's recognized by learned scholars. However, although a person may be a learned scholar in vague knowledge, he's not recognized if he's an atheist. Even though a person is very learned in the Sanskrit Vedic literature, he's not accepted as my devotee unless he's in pure devotional service. Even though a person is born in a family of dog eaters, he is very dear to me if he's a pure devotee who has no motive to enjoy fruit of activities or mental speculation. Indeed, all respect should be given to him. Whatever he's offered, whatever he offers should be accepted. Such the boys are worship, worshipable as I am. So, uh, when Narada Muni was walking on the path, he came across one Brahmana. The Brahmana asked Narada Muni, where are you going? Narada Muni said, I'm going to see my Lord, Lord Vishnu in Vaikuntha. So the Brahmana said, well then ask Lord Vishnu when I'm going to go back to Godhead. Then Narada Muni came upon a cobbler and he asked the same question. And the cobbler said, Ask Lord Vishnu when I will be able to go back to Godhead. So then Narada Muni came back and he told the Brahmana that <clears throat> Lord Vishnu, and Brahmana said, Well, what did Lord Vishnu say? When am I going to be, be delivered, go back, uh, get out of the material world? And Naramu said, well, for you it may take some time. We have to wait some time. And the Brahma, Brahmana said, well, what was Lord Vishnu doing? And Naramu said, he was string, he was <coughs> stringing an elephant through the eye of a needle, this way and that way. And the Brahmana said, you are, you're cheating me. You didn't see Lord Vishnu. That's not possible. So then he went to the cobbler, the cobbler told the cobbler that Lord Vishnu said that you will return to back to God at very soon. And he said, the cobbler said, well, what was Lord Vishnu doing? And Narada Muni said, he was throwing, stringing an elephant through the eye of a needle this way and this way. And the Brahmana and the cobbler uh, was very happy. And Narada Muni said, how is it you, you believe such a thing? Well, the cobbler said that the uh, Lord Vishnu can't do anything. If he can take one seed and make a banyan tree, then why can't he string an elephant through the eye of a needle? So one person had faith in the Lord and would get the mercy of the Lord. The other person didn't have faith, although he was a brahmana. When Chittaketu wanted also to perform, had 10 million wives, but he didn't have a son. He wanted to perform the strata, have a son to save him after he left his body. So the strata ceremony is meant to free one from, free one's ancestors from suffering. And there's other ceremonies that were performed in the 
uh, past but are not being performed now. So the householder, they can perform Shraddha ceremonies, but uh, the brahmacharis, the brahmacharis and sannyasis don't have to worry about our forefathers because just like Pallad Maharaj, when he was, uh, says that because he was a pure devotee, all his ancestors, past and future for 21 generations, would be delivered. So these two things are there. So the, uh, my Lord Titania himself, my Lord Titani was a child. He was called Nimai Pandit. And he went to school, learned Sanskrit very quickly, became a Pandit. But Lord Titani is Bhakta Avatar. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he comes in the role of a devotee. So, up until the time he went to Gaya, people didn't know his identity. So when his father left his body, he went to Gaya to offer Pinda to, for, the, uh, for his deceased father. And he saw the footprint, he saw the footprint of Mahavishnu in Gaya. And then he started to exhibit ecstatic symptoms. So when he came back from Gaia, he was a different person. He gave up his uh, proud uh, position as a scholarly pandit and became a Vaishnav devotee. But Mother Sachi and the neighbors thought that Lord Chaitanya had some wind disorder. They thought he was sick. As Ayurvedic medicine, there's 52 different kinds of wind disorders in the body. When the, when the disturbance in the airs in the body, and one gets sick. And one of those sicknesses is madness. So they thought Lord Chaitanya was mad. So the neighbors advised that they bind him with rope and put, feed him green coconut water and rub Vishnu oil on his head. Even they even put him in a vat of oil and to bring him back to normal consciousness. But then Sri Vasudhakura came there and saw Lord Titanya and told Mother Satri, you don't have to worry. Lord Titanya is not in a disease condition. He's ecstatic, exhibiting ecstatic symptoms, ecstatic love of God. And I was, he said, I also wish I could have the same disease condition. So this is the example, uh, Shraddha ceremony, Sati rites, formerly women would enter the fire when their husband left his body. They'd take his body to the cremate, cremate his body and the woman would also enter the fire. But as Pakali Yuga progresses, women are not willing to enter the fire with their husband. So that has become outlawed. In this way, uh, there's a different activities that uh, with different uh, ashrams should follow. But <coughs> here it says the Brahman should not invite many people for this kind of Shraddha ceremony. One, two, three Brahmins, that's all. And it shouldn't be elaborate. It shouldn't be like a marriage. So, uh, the there's a difference between a Vaishnava and a Brahmana. 
In the age of Kali Yuga, close Sutra Sambhava. Everybody is less than Brahmana. So you can't find a bona fide Brahmana. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya forbid five actions. That is, the taking of sannyas, the offering of a horse or cow sacrifice, offering flesh to the forefathers, and getting a child from the brother and your wife. These are forbidden in the sage. Of course, Lord Chaitanya forbid the people to take sannyas because he knew that people would misuse that ashram and put on the dress of a sannyasi just to fill their belly and not really uh, be sannyasi. It's like in Vrindavan, the temples, the title of the people in charge of the temples are called Goswamis. But they're not really Goswamis, they're householders and they have wife and children and they're not <coughs> uh, living like a Goswami. Goswami means someone who has full control of his senses and only uses his body, mind and words dedicated to the service of Krishna. So there's many in Kali Yuga to find many uh, people who claiming to be Brahmins, claiming to be gurus, claiming to be this and that, but they're actually cheating. They're not following uh, the injunction of the scriptures. So Srila Prabhupada was ordered in 1922 by Bhakti Siddhanta. You go and preach the message of Lord Chaitanya to the English-speaking world. So, at that time, English was not the first language. And the English is the second language in India. So, the first language, English-speaking world, means America, England, other countries. Uh, the New Zealand, Australia. This, these are places where people mainly speak English. So Prabhupada prepared himself and then finally <coughs> in 1965 he, he uh, boarded the Jaladuta and came to America. So Prabhupada came here on the order of Lord Chaitanya and on the order of <coughs> uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who said Viti Viti Achayate Nagarari Gram Parvacha Pacha Habe Mora Nam. In many towns and villages, as they're on the surface of the earth, may my holy name be preached. So, this is the order of Mahaprabhu in Chaitanya Bhagavad. And so, when Prabhupada came to America, saw the condition of the people, saw the, what he had to deal with, he gradually had to convert people who were addicted to meat-eating, gambling, intoxication, and illicit sex. And to convert such people is not a very easy task. Bhakti Siddhanta sent his disciples to England 
to preach. And there was one Lord there, Lord Jetlin, who asked his sinya, disciple Bhaktisanta, can you make me a Brahmana? And he said, yes. All you have to do is give up me eating meat, give up intoxication, no coffee, tea, or cigarettes, give up illicit sex, and give up gambling. And then you can become a Brahmana. So the man replied, impossible. So although the, they did go to England and try to spread Krishna consciousness, they weren't very successful. So Prabhupada coming to America, gradually he introduced the four regulated principles. No meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex. So this was the uh, is the foundation for making first class people, first class men. Even though <coughs> by birth we are all sudras or less than sudras. We had no qualification. And Prabhupada, if Prabhupada did something that was not proper or not right, then he wouldn't have gone to America in the first place. But he went there not to make Brahmins, but to make Vaishnavs in the uh, uh, Upanesh Amrita he said being in his original Krishna conscious position a pure devotee does not identify with the body such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view indeed one should overlook a body devotees having um, having a body born in a low family a body with a bad complexion, <clears throat> a deformed or diseased body, or infirm body. According to ordinary vision, such imperfection may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee. But despite such defects, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. So here it says that one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family. So all of us who were there in America and were initiated by Srila Prabhupada came from a body of a low family. So there wasn't any application. Prabhupada didn't give, make us fill out an application and, and say what what kind of family we were born in. In India, it's a different story. Some people are born in Brahmin families. But if you're born in the family of a high court judge, you don't become a high court judge immediately. You have to qualify yourself. So just being born in a Brahmin family doesn't make you a Brahmin. You have to uh, develop the qualifications of a Brahmin. Of course, it's easier to become a Brahmin if you're born in a Dodi family, a Vaishnava family, or Brahmin family. Then, from birth, you get trained up. But we see many devotees, many people have children. They try to train them to become good devotees. But it doesn't always work because devotees have people, we have free will. So some uh, Gurukul students, even though they were got the training from birth, they still rejected the Krishna consciousness and decided to try living in the, being material, be a materialistic person and not following uh, following the regulated principles. So, 
Prabhupada came back to India in 1972 with his Western disciples, and he got heavy chastised and criticism from the local Brahmins, even from his God brothers, for making Western people into Brahmins and sannyasis. But Prabhupada wanted to spread Krishna consciousness on the order of Lord Chaitanya, Lord of the spiritual master and Lord Chaitanya. And spreading Krishna consciousness meant that you convert people from, uh, from the uh, low class people into first class people. They asked Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada said, we're trying to make a society of first class men. So they said, what's a first class man? He said, anyone who can follow the four principles, no meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex, that's a first class man. So they didn't appreciate it that Prabhupada had, had the ability to transform the lowest people into the highest people. Even his God brothers criticized him for doing that. But uh, those he, when he opened the temple in 1975, the local Brahmins they wouldn't accept our prasadam because they said it was contaminated. But one of Prabhupada's God brothers requested Prabhupada to give him a donation for some project. And Prabhupada said, well, I, you won't take our prasadam because you say it's contaminated. So how can you give, a, how can you take our money? That's also contaminated. So they, will, they won't take our prasadam, but they'll take our money. So in either case, Prabhupada had the power to convert people into Vaishnavs, not just Brahmins. The Yagya Brahmins were there and performing sacrifice. Krishna Balaram went to the, told the cowboy boys to go to the Yagya Brahmins and beg some food, we're hungry. So they went to the Yagya Brahmins, said Krishna Balaram are hungry, please give us some food. But they ignored them. They were busy with their ritualistic sacrifices. So they went back to Krishna Bhavaram, told him what happened. Krishna Bhavaram said, now, you go to the wives of the Brahmanas. So the wives of the Brahmanas were devotees of Krishna. And as soon as they heard that Krishna Bhavaram were hungry, and the coward boys needed food, they immediately left the sacrifice, left their husbands, left their family, left their child, left everything, took all the food in their house, and believe, went to Krishna and Balaram. Then the Brahmanas could understand that they were just forming, were smarter Brahmins, only interested in ritualistic ceremonies, and they had not developed love for Krishna and Balaram. And even though their wives were pure devotees, they appreciated that their wives were pure devotees of Krishna. They couldn't go to Krishna because they were afraid of Kamsa. So the Prabhupada went to America to introduce Vaishnavism, not Brahmanism. We gave second initiation because it's required for deity worship. In Australia, Prabhupada went to Australia and was going to give Brahma initiation so he could install a deity there. So they told one lady, you make Brahman thread. So she said, what's a Brahman thread? And then she said, what's a Brahman? And should I make Brahman thread for the ladies? So they didn't know what a Brahman was or what a Brahman thread was or any of these things. But gradually, uh, became clear. But Prabhupada created one of the great Vaishnavs. You may have a hundred dollars, you may have, if you have a million dollars, if you have a hundred dollars in the bank, you don't worry about 
Now, if you have a million dollars, you don't worry about a hundred dollars. So someone may be a brahmana, but if he doesn't, if he doesn't worship the Lord, doesn't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality Godhead, it's considered like owning a cow that doesn't give any milk. But one may have all the twelve qualifications of a brahmana, but if he's not a devotee of Krishna, then he can't help him deliver anyone, he can't deliver his family, he can't even deliver himself. So in this way, Prabhupada gave us second initiation, knowing quite well that we were not qualified to be brahmanas. But he was giving us the chance to become a brahmana. Just like when Lord Balaram was traveling, he came across a uh, some sadhus who were born as sacrifice and elected Rohar, Rohar son of Sutta to the Vyasa son. So Balaram came there, everybody stood up, offered respect. But Rohar son of Sutta, being proud of his position, did not offer respects to Balaram. So Balaram took a blade of kusa grass and killed this person because he was elected to the Vyasa san so that he could become qualified to sit on the Vyasa san. But because he failed to offer respects to Brahma, to, to Lord Balaram, he showed that he had not attained the qualification to sit on the Vyasa san. So Prabhupada gave second initiation to, to many people, hoping with the hope that they would come up to the standard of, of Brahmana. In Bhagavad Gita, it gives the qualifications of a Brahman. So in this way, um, it doesn't matter what family was one is born. It's not, uh, Krishna says, doesn't, doesn't say Janma Karma. He says Guna Karma Vigayashaha. He doesn't say by birth. He says Janma Guna Karma Vigayasha, Chaturvedam, that anyone can uh, become a qualified devotee, can become a devotee of the Lord, not by his birth, but by his qualification. So the devotees, what Prabhupada did, he was like a touchstone, a miracle, that he was able to convert so many people into not to Brahmins but to Vaishnavas. And we see that devotees in this movement are going all over the world preaching Krishna consciousness, introducing people to Krishna consciousness, even though they weren't born in Brahmin families, even though they were addicted to all kinds of sinful activities before becoming devotees. Now they're doing the service which is most pleasing to Krishna. He says in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, anyone who preaches this message of Krishna consciousness, that no one is more dear to me than he. So now people are accepting uh, more and more, the devotees are being accepted as uh, bona fide, this, this movement is being accepted as a bona fide movement and uh, being respected by all different classes of people. So in this age, Kali Yuga, the highest welfare work is the uh, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the two points here, the Shraddha ceremony is performed by the householder. They should only invite one, two or three Brahmins and the Brahmins should be qualified Brahmins, not smarter Brahmins, should be pure devotees of the Lord, like Haridas Thakur.
Hare Krishna. Time is up now. Many things more can be said about this verse, but I have to do some service. Hare Krishna. Svantara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijan. Srila Prabhupada Kijan.